Yo nací durante la ocupación soviética. En este momento, ciudad de Kabul eh, había con mucha normalidad, ¿sabes? La gente vivía muy tranquilamente, no había muchas dificultades. Me recuerdo cómo estudiábamos, cómo íbamos al colegio, nuestra casa. Todo el mundo so, sobre azotea de su casa se estaban volando sus cometas de todos los colores ciudad de Kabul, ¿no? Por tampoco era muy consciente de guerra, porque pensaba que eh, mi país está sufriendo de guerra, pero a mí no me tocará. Es lejos. Allí, en pueblos, provincias, pero mi casa, a mi a trabajo de mi papá, eh, no. The Soviet troops entered Afghanistan in 1979 to support the communist government against an Islamic guerrilla. <laughs> Kabul remained relatively safe, but in the provinces, the war was brutal. Thousands were arrested and tortured by the communists. Villages were destroyed. One million people died. Many more left the country. With the Soviet withdrawal, the people of Afghanistan hoped for peace at last. When the last Soviet soldiers was withdrawing and when they, when they crossed the border, we feel so free. It's like, breathe back, and this is the country back. At this time, I was a university student. I was on the age of 19. That was a kind of impression we had that, okay, this is the chapter close and the new chapter will start, but the good one, the one that the people of Afghanistan will, uh, will, will be the one and, and they will again enjoy their life uh, before Soviet. The Soviet army was gone, but in Kabul, there was still a communist government. The president, Dr. Najibullah, saw this moment as a unique opportunity for the nation to reach peace. He set out to promote reconciliation between the Afghans who had fought on both sides, those who supported the government and the Islamic guerrilla, the Mujahideen. After my father became the president, the idea was to have reconciliation. And the word, the term was very new for me. He never came home with his political ideology and sort of indoctrinated us. I would ask him, for example, what is this supposed to mean? What reconciliation is all about? That was his vision. We could go ahead and have a peaceful country. We could find a way out of this clash of jihad and communism. There's a difference between the traditional and, and progressive views, how to bring women on board, how to integrate the commanders and their soldiers. So come and sit with me and we will work it together. My father had said that history will prove one day that I stood for um, for a right cause. What the people of Afghanistan need is more sympathy in economic assistance, not more bumps and guns. The Mujahideen had defeated the fearsome Soviet army. Now they wanted to install an Islamic Republic. They wanted power. In 1992, Mujahideen commanders like Massoud prepared their men for the last step, the takeover of Kabul. We were all waiting for reaching Kabul one day. And our dreams and our talks and our memories and our desires, all fighters, what is your goal? Kabul. What do you want from God? Kabul. What do you dream of? Kabul. 
After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Moscow cut all support to the Avron government. The new Russian leadership was not afraid of a Mujahideen takeover in Kabul. President Nagyib wanted to talk to us. We did not talk. We said, no, you go, we will be in Kabul, otherwise we push you out. It was April 92. We were very close, about maybe five kilometers from Kabul. Commander Massoud decided this is the best time to go. Massoud, the so-called Lion of Panjshir, had become an icon of the Afghan guerrilla. Despite the Western press praising him as the Afghan Che Guevara, he was only one of many Mujahideen commanders. And all of them wanted to be the first to take Kabul. Kabul? Yes. Yes. Today? Yes. Today. Kind of chaos, you know, huge thing watching. Oh my goodness, is this a resurrection day? Clothes, dirty beards are up to belly button, and all dust on your face, but a smile on your lips. At the end of April 1992, Kabul was in the hands of the Mujahideen. The era of communist Afghanistan was over. The people knew that they are the Mujahideen. The, you cannot imagine. 80% of the society, the, the citizens of Kabul, came to welcome uh, these people. It was wedding in the level of a city. Everywhere happiness. I remember when first time I saw a Mujahideen, it was a nightmare. A man with a very long hair. Uh, on end of his hair, he had these bullets and very dirty clothes, dirty hands with the long nails. And instead of one clashing cough, he had four on his, two in one side and two in, on the other side. I never seen someone like that. It was like a nightmare. Which kind of human is this? Me recuerdo que un día mi padre viene muy nervioso en casa y dice a mi mamá, tenemos que quemar todos los libros que tengo. Ahora entraron los los mujahidines, ellos eran contra los comunistas y todo esto. Mi papá él sabía leer ruso. Encendieron este tandor, este horno que cocinan pan, eh, y mi papá cogía todos sus libros, mi, mi madre cogía de los almarios y todo esto, eh, traía a mi papá, y mi papá miraba los libros, para última vez los abría, uh, ojeaba los papeles, los libros, y quemaba, y lloraba. When my father decided that we had to leave, I didn't even know that I was leaving because when we left for ho holidays was, the, was when I met my father last. I said bye and I got in the car and then he looked at me and he goes, you didn't give me a hug. And then he said, just make sure that you learn English very well because you need to come back and help me with it. So I said, okay, and, and that was it. So then I didn't meet him. There have been conflicting reports from Afghanistan today about the whereabouts of President Najibullah. Last night, several hundred troops who recently defected from the government took control of Kabul airport and were reported to have prevented Dr. Najibullah from leaving the capital. It's now thought he's taken refuge at a United Nations office in Kabul and has resigned from all his posts in government. He was stopped at a checkpoint. And one of the soldiers that were there uh, tell him, look, you know, um, I think there is, um, there is a plan to get rid of you. So then my father goes to the UN and that was it. 
the, the uncertainty of not knowing what's gonna happen tomorrow started from there on. Later that day, a BBC reporter bumped into what remained of the Afghan government. The foreign minister and government spokesman, Mr. Wakil, made his last official media statement. After today, this government is finished. It's finished, yes. And what will you be doing now? Now, you're going to prepare the, the ceremony of the delivering of the power, yes? The aeroplanes, tanks, ministries, the palace, radio TV of the Afghan government. Oh, what kind of victory? This is all ours now. We are the new rulers now. This is ours. This is the office of Najibullah, the president of Kabul. Where is he? He's in the, in the UN, refugee. But the celebration was short-lived. Once in Kabul, Mujahideen commanders began wrestling for power. Even as Massoud's troops entered the capital, the southern part of the city was occupied by another faction. Its leader had founded the first Islamic party in Afghanistan, and he wanted to be the next president, Hikmat Yar. حجوم نیروهای شورای بر افغانستان ما در مبارزه در میدانش به عنوان یگانه حرکت اسلامی و جهادی بودیم که در برابر کمونیست ها می جنگیدیم هیچ حزب اسلامی دیگری در افغانستان وجود نداشت The Hizb Islami leader Hekmet Yar had rejected various plans for transitional governments and carried out his threat to invade Kabul this may be the critical moment of events so far. As we understand it, these men here, men of Hekmatia, have taken over the presidential palace. Different Mujahideen commanders agreed to form a temporary government. Masood was appointed Minister of Defense. But Hikmat Yar rejected the agreement. Press conference in the Foreign Ministry. Commander said, the war is not yet over. We are under the rockets of the rivals. ارگ دستور داد با پن تاری خود آمدن خانه من رو بمبارد کردن سی و دو بم راکت ریختن و به مجایدین اجازه دادیم که یک چند مرمی و طرف ارگ فیر کنن و با اونا بگوین که اگر سلسله دوام کنه دیا باز منتظر باشین که ارگ مسلسل زیر آتش ما خود تصمیم قطعی مایی بود که هیچ فیر مرمی هم باید به سوی یک عدف غیر نظامی انداخت نشد they attack extra rockets during civil war, start from Hekmatyar and then Masood. They both were fighting. Hekmat Yar belonged to the largest Afghan ethnic group, the Pashtun, which ruled over Afghanistan for centuries. Masood belonged to the Tajik minority. In this multi-ethnic country, rivalries among different groups added fuel to the fire. Kabul became a battleground. Its inhabitants were left at the mercy of the fighters. Nos usaban para matar uno a otro, 
es como dos personas cobardes que se hacen guerra, pues al lugar de ir un frente a la otro, cogían niños civiles o como mujeres civiles y estas se escondían en una casa de gente civil. Que en mi país tenemos muchos desiertos, muchas montañas, podían ir allí, matar uno a otro, pero no, los civiles teníamos que sufrir. Yo estaba esperando en esta habitación a mi madre con una revista de dibujos de cómico. Estaba mirando con mucha curiosidad esas imágenes que cayó una bomba eh, justo en la habitación donde estaba yo. Me quemé con esta bomba. Los médicos que quedaban solamente curaban los que ellos, según ellos, se podía curar. Ya está. En mi caso, para ellos no era posible mmm, que sobreviva. Mi mamá iba en casas, eh, buscaba algodones, cojines, quemaba. Y cogía la ceniza de estos algodones y traía en hospital y metía todos los agujeros de mi cuerpo de él para que no salga sangre. Mi cuerpo se, mmm, le curó mi madre. Au mois de mai, c'était une guerre qui, qui était liée aux heures de bureau. Ça commençait à 8h, heures, 8h15, heures avec une petite pause vers midi. Et puis ça finissait à 7h15 le soir, avec les prières. Et ils sont en train de s'excuser pour les crimes qu'ils font, pour se faire pardonner qu'ils qu tuent des gens. Ils sont bien conscients de ça. He asked me, Commander, where are our friends, those who helped us during the war against Soviets, NATO forces, NATO leaders, America, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, where are they? I don't know. Aujourd'hui, la honte est à Kabul. Kaboul, coupé du monde, déserté par les Occidentaux. Ambassade britannique, fermée. Ambassade des États-Unis, fermée. Ambassade de France, fermée. Mon sentiment, c'est que l'ONU et les puissances occidentales s'intéressaient à l'Afghanistan tant que nous nous battions contre l'URSS, contre le communisme. C'était l'ennemi commun. Ensuite, l'intérêt a complètement chuté, ils nous ont laissé tomber. 